Hello webs, hi, this is Fahad from Future Phones and today I have a MacBook Air to repair. This motherboard was badly liquid damaged and uh, there were so many faults with this uh, MacBook. I have successfully fixed all of them. I will show you what I've done so far, but in particular there is one fault. Um, the reason to make this video is that fault. You will come across this fault and whenever you will you will have real difficulties fixing that fault but if you watch this video till the end you will definitely be able to fix it so i will uh, show you in the microscope what i've done so far and uh, then i will show you what is that fault and uh, why i'm making this video because uh, every video that i make i want to make when there is a reason so keep uh, watching this video and let's go in the microscope. So um, the board number on this uh, MacBook Air board is 8203209. Uh, this is the model number 8203209. The fault uh, that I'm going to talk to you in the end, uh, it will, um, you can use the the same logic the same repair for all macbook air boards so let's see do not waste any more time and let's see what i've done so far on this board but before uh, no display there were some other faults as well that uh, um, they are worth mentioning as well let's uh, let's check this uh, so when i received this board it was badly liquid damaged and there were some components uh, they were broken and uh, they were not uh, on this board so you can see this coil here this coil was missing so I put a new coil here and this coil was missing so I put this coil also here and what these coils do they are the power for the PCH and this is uh, the guy that requires all these powers and uh, if I could show you in the uh, schematics as well let's go in the schematics and i'll show what those coils are for so here is uh, this uh, l4206 and uh, which is this coil so this coil was missing l4 l2406 and this is the pch power and uh, pp105 it's a 105 volt that is a requirement for the pch and uh, this coil was missing so we put i put this uh, coil in and uh, after that i also found that uh, this coil was missing so i put this coil also which is l25 l2451 and uh, i'll show you where it is so again this is uh, another 3.3 volt rail in the s0 state which is like a running state of uh, this uh, macbook air and uh, this is also a requirement for the pch this coil was missing so i installed this coil also and after that i let's go back to the microscope here so what other faults were in this board is here also one more fault was in this board as i said you know this board was a challenge it took me quite a while and uh, i took it as a challenge and i just um, checked checked it afterwards and it's working fine now so this part was missing also so you know like these parts they are all important parts you can't skip them you should have a very keen eye when you are looking in the physical condition if you find anything missing this must be installed and uh, after everything is you know like physically your board is okay then you can check and then you can go for the logical reasons or oh, what is happening on the board if there is no display or um, there is no power um, green light is coming green light is not coming but all these things uh, they must be looked at as a whole so the board should have no physical problem in the beginning and after that you could uh, go for any logical um, reasons why the board is not powering on so this uh, ic was missing um let's see what this ic does um let's go back to the desktop and uh, i have this here okay what else it does so look this 
transistor says it's a critical part so any critical part if it's missing obviously your board is not going to power on it will have so many other issues maybe the touchpad is not working so it could cause so many problems so critical anything that is critical and is missing it must be there on the board and uh, what is it doing um, is just passing some power to the 15 volt boost regulator here u83 okay so this is the wind power so you can imagine if uh, this transistor is not here that your thunderbolt 15 volt boost regulator is not going to work so that i've um, obviously this this part was missing so i installed it okay so the next thing that i found this board started giving me amperes like 700 milliamps and after 700 milliamps it was going back to 30 milliamp uh, 0.031 milliamps so it was behaving in a way where you know like it was powering on and then you know at the very end it was coming back to power off so i i was thinking you know because uh, this board was liquid damaged so this type of issue when you are almost there uh, you have a 700 milliamp power and your board is still turns off so at that point you should look somewhere in the memory section or the BIOS section and uh, this is where I looked and uh, I found one rail of resistors here so this resistor here uh, these are um, uh, this component here this is the resistor so there is uh, four uh, resistors in this uh, component so one two three four this resistor had a missing pad here this was liquid damage here so i changed it i changed it to a new one so let me just see if you can yeah so there was some problem here so i changed uh, this resistor and uh, i changed this component here and then i had a constant power so the the board was powering on it was going to point 700 milliamp which is a very good power once your macbook air board is at 0 0.700 milliamp that means you should have a display at that point okay so next thing i still had no display so i checked further now this is the point when you don't have a display then you are going to look at the the section where there is a display uh, area in the display area i checked at this connector here which is the lcd lvds connector here you know like look at the connector this is all okay so i looked inside the pin and in, in, inside these you know like inside this uh, connector and uh, i there was no problem with this connector here now the next problem is this here so this area is a 3.3 volt rail this is the power that goes towards the lvds connector and this is the power that carries the signals uh, for your lvds connector let's see uh, what it does i'll be able to explain it more when i go into the schematics and uh, let's see let's go to the schematics and uh, here so we are talking about this part here so you can see here this is 3.30 power that is going towards the lvds connector and you can see there is a coil also here this uh, power the 3.3 volt power comes here on this ic uh, which is a uh, five six legs ic which is here u9000 fpf1009 and what it does basically you get a power which is a pp3v3 s3 underscore lcd so you get two 3.3 volt lines here and then there is an enable once this enable comes these powers they go past this ic and they go to this v out voltage out one and two they both make one power which is pp3v3 sw underscore lcd so this power is acting as a pull up supply for some signals some very important signals so you can see here so this is going past this coil l9004 and then there is a resistor 
and you can see here dpint aux ch underscore n so imagine you know the signal is weak if you don't give that 3.3 volt to the signals they won't be able to get to the lvds connector if they don't get to the lvds connector you don't have a display so this was the next thing that i did so what i've done here on this uh, part i'll show you in the um, on the board in the microscope let's go in the microscope i'll show you what i've done here so because uh, this is all boring part you guys uh, should learn it but uh, um, the thing that i want to talk about is still there it's not this so keep watching so this is a six pin ic what it does you get a 3.3 volt power here and through this capacitor it goes to these two pins pin number two and three pin number one will receive enable and once you get this enable these and this enable is coming from the pch so imagine you know those two coils that we fixed already if those coils were not there then you won't be able to get the enable signal here so once you receive us enable signal here 3.3 volt from this point will transfer here and from here it will go to this coil here pin number four will connect here four and five they will give power to this coil and this coil has these uh, capacitor uh, these are you know like uh, they will make this uh, power a bit smoother so you have uh, these two caps here doing that job and after that it will transfer here and then this capacitor this capacitor capacitor has this pin to ground this one and from here the power will transfer to this capacitor and from this capacitor this will transfer to these pins so once you have power here then you can say that now your display is coming to the board and this is what happened once uh, i have this power here i had the display but there was no backlight so there was no backlight so next thing i did i've already explained in my other previous videos uh, how the backlight circuit works how the boost regulator works on this uh, um, um, macbook air boards so this is uh, this area was uh, receiving 8.4 on this uh, fuse so our power was okay 8.4 was right and then 8.4 came here 8.4 was here once i connected lcd we had a 2.7 volt here on this pin and this 8.4 transferred here and then went into the current sensing resistor here and after current sensing resistor the 8.4 went to this ic and then here and then it went on this diodes this pin from here the thing that i wanted to talk to you about comes in action so i had 8.4 volt available but it was not boosting so next thing i was just like in my previous video i have uh, talked about i will give you the link in my description for that previous video um, how the backlight circuit works um, this video you can call it um, something you know like level up so what happens when you have uh, checked the ic you have checked all the powers and you have also changed the ic and you still don't get that switching power from the ic why you don't get that switching power from the ic so this is what we are going to talk to you about so the scenario is you don't have a backlight on a macbook air you have checked the circuit you have changed the ic and you still don't have um you have changed the backlight ic and you still don't have backlight on the screen and you have a good testing lcd but you still don't get the the backlight on the lcd so what do you do next what are the signals that you need to check why your um, switching power is not being generated from your uh, backlight ic so let's go to the backlight ic and see so this is uh, the backlight ic i will take you to the microscope um yeah so this is the backlight ic here let me just show you here so i will just put it this way it's easier for me where is that backlight ic which is here okay so this is the backlight ic 
what backlight IC does because you are already receiving 8.4 volt through that fuse that I've we have already checked and it goes past that current sensing resistor and then you also have a coil 8.4 volt goes past that coil and then it reaches to that diode now this IC is supposed to generate switching power that will boost that 8.4 volt into 27 volts or 24 volts depending on how much uh, brightness is required by the LCD so what happens when you have changed this IC and you still don't have power so let's go back to the desktop and I'll try and explain and then we will come back to this microscope So this is the backlight IC, U9701, and it's almost like it's the same IC in all the MacBook Air so far I have uh, seen. It's probably used in MacBook Pro as well. I'm not really sure, but this is the IC. I've already explained how the circuit works, and uh, this is the circuit we were looking at before. This is the fuse that I talked to you about. 8.4 volt comes to this fuse, and then this is the voltage divider it will provide enable to this uh, Q9706 and you should be able to get um, 8.4 volt here so this is a uh, six legs IC probably um, yeah I'll show you where it is yeah this is the so this is the fuse yeah this is the fuse you can see here and then it reaches here so at pin number three you can see the LCD backlight enable comes here by the voltage divider DIV probably that means the voltage divider yes okay so yes this is the the signal that we were talking about once this circuit works then you should have at pin number one two uh, five and six you should have 8.4 volt available and then it goes to here it goes here um, and then it comes to this uh, mm, coil this power you can see here this coil is receiving 8.4 this is receiving 8.4 and this is the last point where we have 8.4 available but at this point of this diode D9701 you should have 24 or 27 voltages available in the working conditions and this is what we were not getting which is what I was not getting um, the I, I see for the backlight was already replaced so I did not bother changing it I knew that it was not the IC so let's see and you can see here oh this is nice you can see from here as well so this is the backlight IC U9701 and you can see here this U9701 in the good working condition after the coil you can see here the 8.4 volt will come here PP bus SW backlight from this point we are talking about this point which is here so if your 8.4 volt is available at A side of this diode D9701 which is this or the pin number one if you have 8.4 available here so what do you think this 8.4 volt is available here also or not yes it is available so this point is the pin number six and seven and there is a testing point here which is the number one so it says um, this testing point says number one and PP bus SW LCD backlight power underscores SW that stands for switching. Now, if this IC was working, then you should have a switching power also available here along with the 8.4 volt available, 8.4 volt. But you won't be able to see through a digital multimeter. For this, you need um, a DSO. Um, I can I will try and show you in this video um, 
if my DSO comes up on the screen that uh, in the working condition how the switching power looks so if you have 8.4 volt available here and you do not get 24 volt avail 24 volts at pin number 2 what are you going to do now so you have already changed the IC but you still have the same problem now you are going to look at these pins which are the enable pins and the power management pins and you can see here enable pin is a uh, a3 and power management is a4 if you want to see further you can look at the sda and scl okay which is the clock signal sda is for the data and if you put your probe through the dso then you should be able to see data on this line also now my problem was i was receiving uh, the enable which is coming here you can see here pp bus sw lcd backlight power which is the same power if you look here which is the similar power as this one here which is coming c9721 you can see here so this power is the same pp bus underscore sw underscore backlight and pp bus sw underscore lcd backlight power so is the same power 8.4 volt through this voltage divider it should come as 2.7 so we will test it but what i was not receiving was the power management now this is the next thing that is a requirement for this ic to work once you have these two powers available enable and power management then you should have a display now power management pin is important because it's coming through the pch and pch uh, knows how much power is required by the lcd and it will give you the give, give the ic instructions how much switching power to make so this pwm will tell ic how much switching power should be made at sw underscore zero one which is like b1 here you can see here here so power management will manage this switching power so if you don't have power management then you won't have switching power here if you don't have enable you don't have switching power here so what is the workaround because this power management is coming through lcd backlight power management is coming directly from you can see here there is no connection this sw uh, this lcd underscore backlight underscore pw is coming from the pch and in a in a water damage and liquid badly liquid water board i was expecting the pch to behave abnormally a little bit and this is what happened now this pch u1800 was not making this power so what to do next if you have a situation like this so this is all we are going to look at the board now in the microscope and we will see if there is a workaround for that and we will see if uh, whatever i have told you it it does stand out or not so this is my board and uh, i will this is my backlight i see where is the backlight i see yes here it is and because the lcd is not connected at the moment so we won't get all these powers um, let me get grab the lcd and then we will see okay i have uh, connected the lcd to the board and uh, you can see in this uh, camera i will you can see uh, this is how i have put it together right now this lcd is connected and this is our um, backlight ic let's go back to the microscope and uh, check some signals and let's see what we can do here so let me connect power to the board and uh, my power supply is set to 16.45 and 3.57 amps and uh, since the LCD is connected now the CPU will know that the LCD is connected and the circuitry for the backlight 
should give power because that 2.7 volt that comes uh, from after the fuse and it goes to those six legs I see it, it, is, it, it can sense that the LCD is connected and then um, the boost circuit and everything starts working after that so you can again go back to my previous video where I've explained it more or uh, how the backlight circuit works but uh, this is the next level obviously so let's see now so I'm gonna give power and I'm gonna power it on so we have uh, no backlight you can see it it does power on you see in this uh, Oh, camera big camera let's see in the big board view do we have a back light problem still or not okay I'll show you that we have display but no backlight you see Apple logo you should have a folder sign here soon yeah you can see we have a folder sign blinking sorry it's not too visible but I, th I think you can see the folder sign you can see the folder sign is showing up I have connected the LCD and we have a backlight problem so it's the let's check the I'll power it off and go back to the microscope adjust the board and we will talk about the backlight IC power management pen so what we are looking for is a 8.4 volt here so you see here we have 8.4 volt and uh, after that this is the voltage divider I was talking to you about and this is the enable pin and we have, should have 8.2.7 uh, here and 8.4 here so this 8.4 volt is the same voltage as this one you can see 8.3 8.4 so this is the switch this is uh, where uh, a switching power should be available also and uh, I can't show you right now uh, I will try to show you on my um, DSO once it's in the working condition so it's no point right now because it's not gonna show up um, okay let's see though so you can see 8.4 volt and this is our 8.4 volt here also so through this voltage divider two resistors are here they are making a voltage divider and we are receiving 2.7 volt here and this is the pin which is uh, the power management pin here on this resistor and again we can go back to our desktop and I'll show you which because this is important that's why I will show you here what I'm talking about you can see so this is the enable pin as I said you know this 8.4 volt coming here okay now uh, this is what we were talking about LCD backlight power management and it's uh, connected to R9704 pin number one which is this one here you can see and uh, this is the power management uh, signal uh, is usually 3.3 volt coming through the PCH and uh, you can see it's directly coming from the PCH uh, and there is just one testing point here and uh, this is uh, the IC the PCH responsible to make the um, LCD power management signal and we do not have it here so what it does it because the PCH can sense how much power is required by the LCD and accordingly it will give signal um, through this 3.3 uh, volt um, it could be less sometimes so this voltage um, after this uh, resistor uh, this voltage will manage this IC and accordingly switching power will be made here you can see uh, B1 and B2 which we are not receiving we are not receiving this because we are not having the power management signal so let's go back to the microscope and I'll show you what is the condition right now so this is uh, my microscope and I'll put system back into the on mode uh, so I'm giving power now to the board 
and uh, hopefully you should be able to see so this is that resistor so it's not receiving anything because I have already cut here made a cut here so uh, there is no signal obviously at this point but we should have uh, a signal here 3.3 volt and you can see is there is no signal here if there was 3.3 volt coming through the PCH then you should have uh, you, sh you have a resistor here and then power management uh, will uh, adjust the switching signal on this IC so this is the point that needs to be checked once you have put a new IC and you still have no um, backlight so this is these are the two signal that you need to look at the power management and the en enable pin so we already are receiving 2.7 um, through this uh, voltage divider this is enable signal which is perfect there is no problems here but there is a problem here so this at this point after this point this signal is coming from the PCH and PCH is not generating so what do we do in this condition because uh, PCH changing is a difficult task we can't change the PCH but there is a work workaround because this 3.3 volt is um, just a power it comes here and through this resistor it just tells this IC how much power to make according to uh, the requirement of the LCD but in this condition there is only one workaround uh, what we can do in the in the running straight there there is a 3.3 as zero power so we need to look for it and if you find it we can give that power to this resistor uh, which which is this one here so you can give this power to uh, you can give a 3.3 volt s0 state power to this resistor and this ic will think that this power is coming from the pch and it will start making um, a switching power however this switching power will be constant because pch is smart it knows how much power is required by the lcd but the power that we are going to give now uh, is not smart it's just a constant power so your lcd backlight will be fully lit all the time so you won't be able to adjust um, the uh, lcd backlight low or high but there will be backlight which should be enough in condition when there is no backlight or backlight so you should go for the backlight which is even full but there is a backlight there so what we can do we have uh, we can do one workaround um, on this uh, IC. The, this, if you look around, look at this capacitor here. This capacitor here. This is a 3.30 S0 state power uh, volt. So what I'm trying to tell you is this power will be available when the your laptop is fully on. And if we receive 3.3 volt here then we can make a bypass we can give a power from here to here and we'll make a cut which i've already done so what we only need is uh, make a jumper from this point to this point so if we put a cable from here to here then we have a backlight so this is the theory let's put it to the practical and let's see if uh, if it works for us let's check before i do anything so if I put one prop here and the other prop here and you see there is no connectivity if I don't make a cut here there will be connectivity so you can see here I have made a cut here on this track you should be able to see now sorry you can see here I made a cut to this track here at this point so the connectivity from this point to this point is no more because this from this point is coming uh, sorry this this point is coming from the PCH so we have disconnected the power um, because if we give 3 volt here and this is also connected then 3 volt go will go towards the PCH which we don't want to do we just want to give from this point to this point we will give a power and uh, it should do the job for us so we are ready we'll make a jumper here now just put some solder
and uh, so this wire is plastic coated what we only need to do is make a jumper from this point so I'll go from this capacitor start from here first Jumper here, just one minute. Here, okay. So, this 3.3 .3 volt in S0 state, we are giving it to this resistor. That's it. I don't want this wire to connect to any other point at the moment. So I'll leave it like this, possibly, or maybe no, I'll leave it like this. Just not making any connection except for from this capacitor to this resistor okay that's okay and uh, if our theory is right we should have a backlight but uh, let's see if we are receiving that 3 volt here so my multimeter goes back into the voltage range again give the power and uh, let's check the power first We have a 3.3 .3 here and we should have 3.3 .3 here also sorry yeah so we have 3.3 .3 here and 3.3 .3 here also and we should have a backlight also let's check here do we have a backlight and we have a backlight you can see we have a backlight you can see that a folder sign and backlight so what do you think guys was it not worth making a video it was make, worth making a video because there is something to learn so I will always uh, make more videos as well so we have a backlight we have a backlight in the good working condition right now we need to just put some masking on on that is just some boring part I will do it later on I will show you the uh, I'll try and show you this the switching power on the DSO let's see if I can show you that so the switching power is uh, the testing point for the switching power is here this is the multimeter right now I'm checking with so and you should see 8.4 volt here but what we really need to check is how the switching power looks at this point and uh, for that I'll try and do that and you can see oh yes this is my DSO and you can see on the DSO that is showing the switching power so this is the switching power it's 500 nanoseconds so if I just make it maybe two hundred microseconds so you can see this there is some switching power now 
at this point along with the voltage 8.4 we are also receiving the switching power and this is what makes your backlight work so this is how the backlight makes switching power and it gives a, and mixes with the 8.4 and it generates a higher power so and then you have uh, 24 to 27 voltages available uh, at the diode that we talked about earlier at that point if we receive 27 volts uh, that 27 volt is uh, made by switching power and 8.4 which comes after the fuse that we have already talked about in this video if you watch this video if you have missed something watch it again and uh, you will know what I'm talking about so that's how you can check and that's how you can fix if you have already changed the IC and you still have no backlight then these are the signals that you need to look at thank you for watching this video if you like this video um, do like and subscribe to the channel uh, share this video and leave any comments if you have any comments you can leave them in the comment section I will try my best to answer these uh, comments thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video thank you very much see you again